This is definitely not the most exciting iPhone launch ever. The iPhone XS is very much an S upgrade. But the Max, though, this is a little bit more interesting. So I picked one up to replace my iPhone X. Let's see what this is all about. So I decided to go with the Space Gray 256 gigabyte iPhone XS Max. That is a mouthful. But looking from the outside, there really isn't too much new here. But there's really three things I was interested in checking out and reasons why I decided to pick up this phone. So first things first, I want to test the camera because it's one of the biggest upgrades with the 10s Max. So we're here at Cars and Coffee, tons of cool stuff to see. So pretty much going to be shooting only on this. So if you see the little icon on the bottom, it was taken on this phone. Let's go see how this performs. The video turned out well, but I'm more interested in photos. There's a new sensor here, wide angle, still 12 megapixels, but they're bigger pixels and that should give you more detail. It also allows for faster autofocus and that is very noticeable when taking photos. Second shooter, 12 megapixels still, nothing really changed there, but still zoomed in. I actually used that a lot, so I'm glad it's still here, although I do wish it was updated in some way. There's two main things here that I noticed that I like a lot. HDR and portrait mode. So HDR is a lot more aggressive now. It'll pull much more detail out of the highlights and the shadows. And you know, sometimes that leads to a fake looking image. But for me, I actually like that because I edit all of my photos and I want that data there. It just gives you more to work with. If you're kind of going straight out the phone, I actually don't think it looks that good most of the time, but I like that the data is there. Now in portrait mode, I have noticed that it cuts out your subject a little bit better than before. But more importantly, you can adjust the blur afterwards. You can go from f1.4 to like f16. f4 seems to be the sweet spot that gives you the most natural looking blur. When you go all the way down to f1.4, it looks it looks pretty fake and I don't think I can ever gonna use that. But what I do like is that it dynamically adjusts that blur in the background. So it's not just like adding a normal Gaussian blur in the background or anything like that. It looks at the depth, it looks at what you're looking at and it adjusts dynamically. But yeah, really enjoying the camera so far. I wouldn't say it's a major update, but little tweaks here and there make for an overall better experience, I think. So now that I've used the Max for about a day, I want to talk about the size because that's really the only reason to get this over the regular 10s. It's it's a big phone. It's a 6.5 inch AMOLED screen. It's pretty much the same thing you get on the 10s. It's just bigger, same pixel density. It's just a larger screen overall. Now I was a little bit hesitant when I was ordering this because I think the iPhone 10's 5.8 inch screen is almost perfect. Not too small, not too big. It gives you the best of both worlds really. But I kind of wanted to try a big screen. Now the reason I wasn't too worried about jumping in was because it's almost the same exact dimensions physically as what you get with the Plus model phones, like the 8 Plus. So yes, the screen is way bigger, but it's not in a bigger footprint. Things I noticed though, yes, it's much bigger and you definitely notice it. It's bigger in the hand, it's harder to reach each corner. For me, I've already had to use the 10, the regular 5.8 inch screen with two hands, so it's not too much of a difference for me, but if you're one of those one-handed people, you're probably not gonna like this. Another issue that hopefully will be fixed, and at least could be fixed, is that the software doesn't really take use of that extra screen real estate. It's just a blown up version of what you get on the 10. Kind of annoying, and I wish that it used more. Definitely, a little pro tip here, change the text size so that you get more text information, like in messages, for example. That helps a lot, but other than that, it's pretty much just a blown up version of what you had before. So yeah, I'm not like 100% sold with this big screen. I would have been perfectly fine with a smaller one, I'm sure. And that really comes down to personal preference. If you want that big screen, go here. It works really well, looks awesome, but it really just depends on what you think. The A12 Bionic is supposed to be like the best chip ever made, right? That's how Apple sells it. And honestly, this is one of those things that is hard to test. Yes, you can run benchmarks and they're gonna tell you that it's faster, 
but how does that affect your day to day? Now, in the time that I've been using it, there's only a few things that I've really noticed that I think you can attribute to that processor. First thing that I wasn't expecting at all is Siri. It is significantly faster on the 10s, And I think that's a hardware thing because running iOS 12 on the 10, I didn't see that. It was still pretty slow. But now you ask a question and it answers almost immediately. The other small thing I noticed is opening apps that definitely feels faster, although that could just be the age of the 10 I had before and this is a fresh install that I did. A lot of things can play into that, but I did notice there was a difference. And another little performance thing that definitely stood out to me doesn't really have to do with the processor, but the RAM, it's now four gigabytes in the 10s, and that's that it would hold an app in its suspended state significantly longer. So I'd be in an app, close out, I'd open like three, four or five apps after that. And when I went back to the app I was using before, it would still be in the state that I left it. And the iPhone 10 was pretty good about this, but I noticed a difference here. So it's about 8 p.m. Sunday night, time to talk battery, which is the other reason why you would wanna get this Max over the regular phone. Has a bigger battery inside, should give you about an hour and a half more battery life, and that's kinda hard to test, but I took it off the charger at 9 a.m. this morning. Haven't plugged it in a single time. It's now 8 p.m., like I said, and I'm at 16%. Haven't turned on power saving yet, but I will probably do that. I'm getting almost six hours of screen on time, and for me, that's pretty good. I didn't really get the best battery life on my iPhone 10. I would use it heavily, and pretty much have to charge by like 2 p.m. But with this, I was able to go all day and I was using it very heavily. So, you know, will that go down over time? Who knows, but battery life seems to be solid. So that's about it. The weekend, unfortunately, is over, but the iPhone XS Max held its own pretty well. This year, there definitely aren't big upgrades. And if you already own an iPhone 10, I don't really see a reason why you would wanna get this unless you're someone like me who's crazy and just loves new technology. But the updates that are here are definitely noticeable. And if you have an iPhone 10, you'll probably see them. But more importantly, if you're coming from anything earlier, this is definitely a worthy phone to get.